from beaks to teeth, tough teeth, the crocodile. But we're not in Africa. We're in the southern United States, the only place in the world you find alligators and crocodiles side by side. The difference between these two very similar creatures is easy to see when you know what to look for. Alligators have broad snouts and their back teeth tucked away. Crocs have much narrower faces and teeth that they keep out in the open. But if you're not sure which is which, don't get too close. Phone a friend. But despite that impressive dental display, American crocodiles are classed as endangered and have been for 25 years. However, in Florida, their numbers are on the rise and no one is too sure why. Frank Mazzotti and Mike Cherkis are biologists at the University of Florida. And to try and answer this question, they've taken to the waterways of the Everglades. But in this huge tidal forest of bays and swamps, finding crocs, even though they can grow over four meters in length, is no easy task. There's much speculation as to why the numbers have increased. Frank and Mike strongly believe that the billions of dollars spent on the restoration of the Everglades, increasing the fresh water flow, must be helping. But they need to know exactly what factors are favoring the crocs. The crocs are even being helped by some very strange allies. One of the best places to see them? Why, in the shadow of the Turkey Point nuclear power plant, of course. The plant's huge cooling canals eject warm currents of water. Perfect for these cold-blooded reptiles. The best time to see crocs is at night, so that's when Mike and a helper head out again. A female lays a clutch of as many as 40 eggs, with only a few hatchlings becoming adults. But why are more surviving than before? A young croc is caught in Mike's spotlight, one of last year's brood. How do you want to... Uh, where you? Okay. American crocodiles are much less aggressive than the infamous Nile and Australian crocs. Nevertheless, Mike needs to be careful. A croc bite can seriously damage a finger. He checks the sex of the youngster. It's a male, and then they measure him. 26.3, snout vent. His weight is also important. It's not much now, but as an adult, he could eventually weigh in at over 200 kilos. And those teeth could get to be five centimeters or longer. Then, very delicately, the croc is tagged, and he's put back where they found him. The next time they come across this compliant little fellow, they'll be able to gauge exactly how he's getting along. It's painstaking and dedicated work like this, repeated across the crocodile's life cycle, that will hopefully give them the answers to their questions. What on earth are these? And what are they doing in a program about beaks and teeth? Find out after the break.